بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم again for a new plenary session number seven to deal with smart data for smart smart sustainability cities. For that, uh, we have uh, our friend Mohammed uh, Hamdi to be the moderator for this uh, session. Hope we will be uh, efficient in time uh, as we were efficient in the first one to catch up with this uh, small delay. So uh, do I am responsible for that. So I'm pushing to catch up on it. <laughs> thank you very much. So uh, Mr. Mohammed, the floor is for you. Okay. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, honorable delegates, welcome again to this session entitled Sustain, uh, Smart Data for Sustainable Smart Cities. So, of course, all of us are aware that the urban uh, landscape is changing rapidly during the last years in the sense that people are moving more and more towards uh, cities and these cities are becoming dense, uh, which complicates the way the citizen interacts with the uh, city in general. And uh, ICT in uh, general and smart cities in particular are often cited as a tool or as a paradigm that can help to cope with uh, these challenges and that can help to facilitate the interaction between the citizen and the multiple actors of the city, including the government, the administration, the private sector, the telecommunication operators, and all of the other uh, actors. So in this session, we will try to address the indicators and the data related to smart cities. So uh, throughout our presentations and throughout our talks, we will try to address three main questions, which are how the government can tackle the challenge related to the measurement and to the monitoring and tracking of smart city. The second challenge is which kind of data and which kind of data policies are required for an efficient setup of a, of a smart city. And the third question, which, which is also very significant, is uh, about the impact in terms of innovation that can be reached throughout this, the uh, setup or throughout the development of smart city. So I, I'm pleased to, to announce our three speakers or three panelists in this, sec in this uh, session, who are Mr. Farouk Tanshur, public policy expert for urban and regional policy from Germany, Mrs. Mr. Sorry, Kwan Ki Eng, executive manager, research and statistics unit from the Info Communications Media Development Authority from Singapore. Our third panelist will be Mr. Xiaobin Wai, General Manager of Chan Yang Branch, China Telecom from China. So I hope that you will enjoy the session and that you will learn about how to address the uh, three questions I mentioned uh, previously. Now I'm pleased to, uh, to invite Mr. Farouk Tanshir to deliver his speech. So Farouk, the floor is yours. Is this working? Perfect. So I'm not a technologist. I will talk more about the city level, and that's why I called my talk Smart Governance for Smart Cities. And, you know, first, before we start talking about smart cities, we should start about urbanization. So the moderator mentioned it. More than 60% of global GDP of today is generated in 600 cities. More than 60%. And the projection states by the end that until 2050, approximately 75% of the global population will live in cities. This means 2 billion people will migrate from rural areas to cities in the next years. When you compare that to a size of a very big megacity like Shanghai, that means 88 new founded Shanghais until 2050. This is a huge challenge. And this huge challenges will come as we know it today, right? Pollution, global poverty, inequality, also traffic congestions, tons of waste that have to be collected. So all these challenges, we have to solve them. And that's where digitalization comes in and the, com the concept of the smart city. So smart city is not a technology. 
It's a concept, and it's a solution concept for a very complex system, the urban system. Cities are big, huge, very diverse, a lot of actors, so we have to keep that in mind if you talk about smart cities. And in the current definition, a broad definition, smart cities mean that we use ICT to solve the challenges of the city, public and private. Smart cities use sensors, use smart devices, smart products, and the data generated to get new insights into the city life. So all the heavily data-driven products we have, generating data, for example, on the street, and we know how people behave in a more granular way. So we have a bigger and a granular view on, on urban patterns and infrastructure. And out of this data, real-time data we generate, we can form products, smart services. And on the right, you can see a good holistic framework of a smart city that, that can be a smart city. It ranges from government services to health, to education, to energy and environment, buildings, mobility. So a whole transformation of the city, digital transformation. In health, we can talk about telemedical services, integrating health information data, tracking health status of people real time, forming good policies to promote health based on this data. At the same time, at, in mobility, we talk about autonomous driving and uh, shared fleet systems, which would solve a lot of traffic congestions. At the center of this development is the city level. So smart cities, there are currently no smart cities in the world. We're just beginning with this transition. So it's very important that cities have a comprehensive strategy with measurable outcomes and goals to become a smart city. And the city leadership is at core. City leadership has to have a holistic smart city framework covering every sector, a good ICT infrastructure strategy on which upon the smart city services can be built, and also executive priority, because if you put a smart city strategy into one department, it will be biased. So the mayor or the city leader has to really take it into the hand. And in the end, of course, the implementation plan with measurable goals and outcomes, which we talked today. So it's on two sides, it's a kind of tricky challenge. You have to manage an ecosystem, because as a government alone, you can't plan a smart city. You rely on startups, on corporations, on NGOs, all using this data to create the public services needed. On the other hand, you have to provide guidelines on how the transition should be formed. So today, we can talk about these guidelines on the measurable level. I brought you an example. So if you want to measure smart cities, we have to distinguish from my point of view, between process and outcomes. Who knows microgrids? Okay, two people. i explain it briefly. So microgrids mean, for example, if you have a district and on the houses you have solar panels, you collect the energy, store it into a battery, and if you have too much energy, you can sell it to your neighbor automatically. So you don't rely to a central power station, you just generate your energy, and if you have too much, you sell it. This, you can do that on a blockchain market. You can do it with smart metering and uh, smart grids. At, and now if you look at this microgrids from a, measurable, from a measurability level, you see, okay, we can measure, measure the technological process. So you can say, okay, microgrid energy production of the total energy production as a measure or number of households connected from microgrids just as a coverage measure. But if you talk about outcomes, it's, it's non-technological. It's reducing CO2 emissions or greenhouse gas emissions or increasing renewable energy consumption of the share of total energy consumption. And this is important to keep in mind because I brought you two examples of cities which have very good strategies, Vienna from Austria and Chicago from the United States, but very different measuring strategies. So let's look at Vienna first. Vienna has a very broad framework. They call it the Smart City Wien Rahmen Strategy, which means framework strategy. And they have resources, quality of life, innovation, and all the technology behind that. And the master plan, the Rahmen Strategy, has, to, has a kind of framework for every other department. So every department covering master plans, for example, for urban development, for traffic, have to align to the master plan of the Smart City Vienna. 
And they say, okay, 2050 is our, our goal, where we have to come. And they use KPIs based on sustainable outcomes. For example, for energy, they say, okay, until 2050, we want to decrease net energy consumption by 30%, or decrease primary energy use per capita from 3,000 to 2,000 watt until 2050. Or for mobility, they want to decrease motorized private transport to 20% until 2025, and below 50% until 2050. So very, very outcome-driven, non-technological. The main KPI for all of this is that Vienna wants to decrease greenhouse gas emissions per capita by 35% at the midterm and 80% in the long run. Now let's look at Chicago. Chicago says we have a tech plan, same very holistic approach, every field covered from education to government, but they measure it very differently from a technological point of view. They say, okay, for government first services, for example, we look at the number of available internal and external data sets. We look at the number of urban sensing platforms, number of urban sensing data sets. Or if you look at the services, they want to look at the percentage increase in customer satisfaction levels, which they have to measure qualitatively by some surveys. Or just the amount of response time to a city service so that it should decrease to be successful. On the other hand, they look at skills. They also say number of digital trainings available or the use of digital technology in schools. They even have the measure number of tweets in Chicago, which I don't know if it's a very good measure, but they still included it into their, their framework. So you see that's a very, very technological point of view. I'm not saying that they're contradictory, but we have to keep in mind that if you talk about smart and sustainable cities, we have these two perspectives to keep in mind. And thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Transfer, for your presentation. In fact, it's important to underline that uh, a smart city is not only a matter of technology, but also a matter of strategy and best practices, and a matter of the readiness of an ecosystem. Uh, maybe another point that can be highlighted is, throughout your examples, is that there is no unifying way to measure the effectiveness of the development of a smart city, because it, it is related to the complex issue and to the specific characteristics or features of the city. So it's very important to keep that in mind. So now I'm pleased to invite our second speaker, Mr. Kwan Ki Eng, from Singapore to deliver, to deliver his speech. So Mr. Uh, Eng, the uh, floor is yours. Hi, good morning. I'm honored to be here to present on the role of data in making Singapore smarter. As we know, uh, the role of data can be that data is one of the basis for measuring national progress and measure uh, information and effectiveness of policies and programs. Besides that, it's also a key element towards uh, objective measurement and tracking of performance. From the data itself, it can be packaged into key performance indicators or indices, like for example, the Global Smart Sustainable Cities Index that will provide a summary of the baseline reference point and also uh, future trends for measuring uh, smart and sustainable performance based on uh, key dimensions such as the economy, the environment, and also uh, society and culture. The key point to emphasize is that we need a standardized set of indicators that will also enable us to use data to benchmark across either cities or countries. In Singapore, we have a well-established national statistical system and it's a decentralized one. We have the uh, Department of Statistics, which is the National Statistical Agency, and then below it, we have gazetted research and sets units and non-gazetted research and sets units. 
so the Department of Statistics is focusing on uh, the overall statistical co collection, official one, on the population and the economy, while the gazetted ones make use of the Statistic Act to collect information related to each uh, domain area of their, uh, under their purview. So the benefits of this decentralized system that is that it enables uh, agencies or statutory board to collect information that are uh, relevant to their own domains, and this will help us to be more specialized and be able to touch base better with uh, users of the statistics. So what is the big picture here? Imagine Singapore as a smart nation. What is the role of the data? Data can, can play the role of informing policy making and, be, uh, and uh, help us to achieve a better quality of life. And imagine a, an economy that is uh, driven by information and also by knowledge. Every piece of data represents a decision point of a single human being. But collectively, you will enable us, as a smart nation, to aggregate all these data points to make better decisions, to understand uh, human decision and, and enable us to make policy at the national level. So by leveraging on technologies and innovations, such as those smart homes, smart building, smart transport, uh, transportation, we are able to transform such data into useful information for policy and strategy making. So how are we uh, in IMDA uh, make use of the role of data? Basically, we are embracing the data to inform our policies as well as strategies uh, in the area of infocom and media. So in our unit, research and sets unit, we collect national level statistics by conducting national level surveys with enterprises as well as with individuals. And then we are also participating in uh, international uh, submission of data that are relevant uh, uh, to, to, shed light more, to shed more light on the ICT areas. And recently, we are very interested to to be involved in monitoring and benchmarking of indicators in the area of digital economy. And we think that uh, it is important that uh, a standardized set of the indicators is being formalized so that uh, it, can be, it can allow for benchmarking across uh, countries or cities internationally. So we have participated in ITU's uh, Smart Sustainable Cities pilot exercise, and we have just completed uh, the second round of phase two of, uh, of the auditing by uh, ITU auditor. So before I conclude my presentation, let me share with you the role of data as illustrated by some of the indicators here. Under the uh, uh, Smart Sustainable City KPI, under the economy di dimension, uh, as you know, Singapore is a small country with limited resources. <clears throat> so land are scarce and roads are precious. So as a result, we, the government would like to encourage uh, uh, the citizens or the residents to take public transport. So indicators such as number of public transport with dynamic information available is very important. It allows uh, the users to be able to monitor when will the next uh, transport, uh, like buses or train, will arrive. So this is one. The second one is because Singapore has limited natural resources, uh, we need to uh, purchase water from neighboring countries. As a result, percentage of water distribution system monitored by ICT is an important indicator that will help us to save more water and to recognize that water is scarce in our country. So under the dimensional environment, I would like, I'd like to highlight that greenhouse gas emission per capita is an important indicator, needless to say, without uh, needing further explanation. And also energy consumption of public buildings, uh, 
because of, a, of our small country, we are, would like to also save on energy consumption. As a result, such indicator will help us uh, to, to conserve resources and mitigate against any climate change. So, last but not least, under the society or culture indicators or dimensions, uh, average life expectancy is like an output outcome indicator of a sustainable uh, development, and we think that this is an important indicator for us to check to measure against our progress. Finally, the percentage of city inhabitants covered by basic health insurance or public health system is also important. That will demonstrate as an input indicator of how well the country has taken care of their citizens with respect to having a proper healthcare system in place. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Ang, for sharing the experience of Singapore with us. So I think it's also interesting to underline the importance of data, since data is the primary ingredient to, me to measure and to assess and to uh, reach reliable and accurate KPIs related to the development of uh, smart cities. So our third speaker is Mr. Mr. Xiaoping Wai from China Telecom China. So Mr. Xiaoping, the floor is yours. Good morning, everybody. I'm Xiaobing Wei from China Telecom, and I'm very glad to meet you here. Uh, it's an honor to share with you some of our achievement and experience in smart city construction, and I hope it will be helpful. First of all, let me introduce the basic situation of our city. Xiaoyang city of Shanxi province is located in the interior part of the Guangzhou plain. Ancient Xiang is the capital of the Zhou, Qin, Han, Tang, and the other uh, three dynasties, along with Xi'an. Uh, Xi'an is the starting point of the ancient Silk Road. The current Xi'an is the center of China transport system, as well as one of the eight international cities in the country. Uh, in recent years, uh, Xi'an has focused on uh, developing the storage of the import of the com uh, company with uh, uh, cyber strength and internet plus plan, better uh, data stressor, uh, national information developing stressor, and uh, grasping significant opportunity. The smart city construction project offered is initiated in 2011. Uh, 2011. Uh, 20, uh, 2011, I have always conducted the construction by taking season into consideration. The project has a particular uh, emitting the people doing business in one site, uh, governing in one grid, uh, serving season in one deal, uh, benefiting season financial life in one cut, uh, connecting the city with one internet. Uh, Xianyang in Palm is one click. Uh, we summarize up uh, 6 1 uh, project. As the largest fixed well communication operator and uh, system integrated uh, in Xianyang, the Xianyang branch of China Telecom is responsible for the construction of a new smart city uh, in Xianyang. Now let uh, me introduce the 6 1 project. Uh, the first one is one site uh, for people service. In past, when people were dealing with the thing related to government, they did not know how to do it. And in most cases, they have to fill in a bunch of the forms, uh, which was very efficient, efficient for both of people or government to solve this problem. We collaborating with the city government, the city government implemented the one side for people service. Uh, bring uh, online service system, uh, include public service and business service, which will send a message to spec uh, sick, fake paper person by cell phone, uh, cell phone app. Most of the things can be 
uh, translated online and other will be less detail uh, about what to do and uh, how to do it. It help build uh, efficient and transform uh, government. The second one is one grid for so, uh, social administration with a rapid development of urbanization. Uh, social relations has changed. People more and more independent. Sometimes they do not know how uh, know their neighbors, which is not good for both uh, personal safety and uh, uh, social uh, security or uh, service. To deal with this, based on urban management and uh, information technology uh, platform, the urban management area uh, divide, divide uh, uh, include community service, urban uh, the, uh, management, comprehensive uh, management and uh, maintenance, civil administration, uh, safety monitoring, emergency response, living, uh, electronic supply, medical treatment, and so on. Based on this, people can uh, submit demands anytime, anywhere to the grid system. Uh, the third uh, deal the third one is one deal for people requirement. I represent the all kinds of government service hotlines has a total of more than 200. Uh, the public, uh, the public uh, can hardly remember those numbers. When they have problems, they do not know whom uh, they should call also official uh, from different uh, department could shirk repeatedly to each other to eliminate uh, this problem, the community center, uh, service is uh, emulated by citing one deal. Uh, the hotline number is 1234. It's easy to remember for everyone. Integrating public service the, and uh, complaint hotline into the one number. If a person has difficult, just deal it. Uh, the first uh, uh, one is one card for fund or the benefit person. In past, the medical information of the hospital could not be shared and their business could not be uh, coordinated. This greatly increased the economic uh, burden on the public. And uh, there are even excessive problems such as uh, unreasonable perspiration, uh, uh, insurance fraud, and uh, regulatory difficult. In response to this, uh, this, uh, pro uh, this problem, on uh, one card, uh, for fund to benefit people, uh, benefit people is uh, conduct to build a smart medical information sharing uh, platform. Uh, of four live uh, countries, uh, cities, uh, towns, and villages based on the electronic health information of the citizens, the medical treatment is achieved by data. Uh, comprehension and to enhance uh, efficiency. At the same time, to improve issue of the in communication uh, in using the funding card, the sus, uh, subsidy system includes food services, uh, subsistence allowance, healthy insurance, and other and other. <coughs> Healthy service. Moreover, the card also includes uh, uh, personal identification, ready, ready to healthy service, uh, payment management of the benefit people, uh, social public service, electronic uh, uh, payment, information collection, and the personal RMB uh, payment. Uh, the 51 is uh, one night for wireless city. In order to meet the needs of the public, uh, uh, being able to connect uh, uh, internet anywhere and uh, anytime, the one night a uh, well city, city has been implemented, uh, focused on the Danish population area, uh, such as a major square, uh, train station, park, uh, and so on. As, as soon as the people uh, use the, their smart uh, phone, uh, uh, they will automatically research uh, the well less single. Uh, the most uh, they can connect the uh, internet. Uh, the most uh, po important is uh, that it's free for everyone. Uh, the sixth one is one click for Pam City. Uh, at the uh, present, more and more people are 
really on mobile phone uh, rather than on desktops in order to meet the needs of the mobile internet de uh, development, Xianyang mobile app application is developed, include plenty of information, such as uh, news, uh, bus travel, weather, uh, health care, education, uh, house funding, public restroom, uh, the address, uh, care, and uh, other life service is very convincing or the efficient. Uh, after downloading the app, you can freely accept to enjoy uh, online community life, uh, lifestyle information, video sharing, modding, uh, medical uh, regist registering, uh, traveling assistance, and uh, the life service. With the uh, reprieved smart city uh, contracts in recent years, Xianyang has proudly realized that instead of the more investment, better foundation, and a wider area, new idea, good mood, quick action is uh, keen to transform the governance function and provide governance and public service lives. In order to strengthen the, uh, uh, the first is supporting uh, data sharing to integrate. In order to strengthen the business system to provide the basic a data support service and the integrated results. We implement centralized operations, centralized maintenance, and intensive use. Standard data interface for sharing and integrate. Uh, exploring crossing uh, department data, sharing the uh, business uh, can library, collaboration within the three levels of the whole city, which uh, can include business regulation and the service relation data of the 12 uh, different uh, uh, industry. Uh, the, the third, uh, the second uh, strengthens the ability uh, government service. So to use the one site service plant, a total uh, 79,051 uh, uh, item of, certain, of so social public administrative service, such as public in core, form download and in enterprise application has been accumulated to realize uh, the re-engineering of the government public service and the proven matter uh, producing uh, uh, controllable process and the efficient uh, surprise. The, improve, the third improve the people's convincing service. Through the use of the one card service achieved the function of the patient uh, uh, appointment, medical uh, payment, uh, health information, include other function. The inter uh, communication those found with the person health care. The service has uh, now covered uh, 3,000 medical institution uh, from city to the countryside. Be uh, benefit of more than 3.6 million people uh, and uh, efficiently enhanced the uh, utilization rate of the medical resource. Uh, since the launch of the hot uh, line uh, number 1234, more than uh, 30, uh, 350,000 cases have been accepted, which is uh, nearly 700 a daily. Uh, uh, the fourth uh, involved so, so, uh, social government service. Through the one pass project, combined the business regulation and the several service of the uh, 12 in, uh, industry sector, sectors significantly improved emergency response and uh, can operation of the all departments. Data shows that it uh, effectively prevent the taxi uh, evasion in uh, Xianyang. According to the big uh, uh, data comparison and analysis in uh, 2015, more than one uh, hundred and uh, thirty-six million dollar uh, sub supplementary taxi was paid. Uh, in corn, moon, uh, hazardous chemical trans trans potion and other field, this project increased the real-time monitor system combined with uh, uh, information and the grid system to enhance self-examination, incident reporting, and emergency uh, response and city comprehension emergency common system. In this case, the response time shortened, shortened to uh, 15 uh, minutes. Now, we will focus on our tag uh, of the new smart city construction, uh, expanding the big uh, 
uh, big data applications such as uh, uh, cloud computing, uh, internet of the thing, and AI. Uh, Pu uh, focusing the big data interest, pushing forward the program of the Xianyang, uh, smart Xianyang, and strive to make people's life uh, get, um, small, uh, get smarter, uh, make the development of the inter industry uh, more, uh, get more advanced, uh, made the, uh, make the government decision get accurate. Uh, that's all my present. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rai, for your presentation. Uh, in fact, in the, at, the, at the beginning of the session, <clears throat> sorry, at the beginning of the session, I said that smart cities can facilitate the way the citizen interacts with various actors of the, uh, of the city. And uh, Mr. Rai provided an example uh, throughout the provision of accessible and ubiquitous services to uh, the citizens, and this is a very important point to underline. So this ends the first phase of our session, uh, so the uh, panels or the presentations and open and now I will open the floor to the delegates in order to forward their uh, comments questions recommendations to the panelists who will interact with them uh, later so please if you have a question raise the panel of your country and yeah well a question over there thank you mr. Sheer. as we are talking about indicators Tunisia encouraged the build of two indicators around IoT. In fact, the development of smart city is in line with SDG number 11 related to making cities inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. However, those digital cities produce a wide range of data sets provided by connected objects. As a provider, we believe that citizens and government should be encouraged to define an agenda for open data initiatives that help to improve decision-making and foster the growth of innovative business. In order to measure the effort of government supporting open data, Tunisia suggests building an indicator based on the number of open data initiatives and their opportunities generation. In the other side, with the massive data captured from various sensor devices, question about who owns the data, <coughs> who right, uh, what right regarding the use of data, what defined the data sharing principle have not been tackled yet. In our point of view, data governance must play an instrumental role in any smart city strategy. For this, we advocate the development of data governance strategy uh, who balance between promoting IoT initiative opportunities and the full respect of personal data particularity. Finally, the integration of smart data we, we, uh, will facilitate quicker responsiveness to emergency and disaster and optimize the conception of city researchers, such as water, electricity, etc., which is again online with SDG number 12, ensure sustainable consumer and production patterns. For this purpose, customers should encourage private companies, such as startups, small enterprises, etc., to massively invest, invest in smart city applications. KPIs measuring the readiness of business environment to invest in IoT could be a good indicator. In the same context, the idea of an implementation of ITU official smart city ranking based on those indicators could promote IoT usage all around the world. Thank you very much. Thank you. A second question here, I think. My question is uh, about the in terms of a smart city, but my question is two jabbing away from China. Uh, thing is that uh, services on mobile, it is very important because uh, the mobile device is very close to the people. Thing is that uh, integration, of integration of all types of data in a single platform, it is very important to integrate different types of data to make a successful a smart city and to visualize them with the uh, nearest device is uh, really important to make a smart city. But how you people are coordinating in different departments, analyzing all the 
geospatial data, socioeconomic data, and different service data in all together in an integrated platform, how you are making the success? Because you have done a lot uh, by applying different uh, apps uh, with the mobile phone. So thank you. Any other question or comment? Yeah. Oui. Uh, bonjour, l'Assemblée. Effectivement, moi, je vais m'adresser uh, aux représentants de l'État de, de Chine. Et tout à l'heure, ils disaient que le Wi-Fi est disponible dans la ville. Alors, j'aimerais savoir, est-ce que ce Wi-Fi disponible dans la ville est uh, catégorisé Est-ce que c'est tous les usagers, y compris eux-mêmes les Chinois, qui, je suppose, sont déjà connectés en 4G ou 5G, si vous êtes, si vous êtes déjà, est-ce que c'est exclusivement, n'est-ce pas, aux, perso aux, aux personnes visitant, c'est-à-dire euh, aux, aux touristes qui sont dans la ville Merci. Thank you. So, one fourth, fourth and last question. Yeah. You. Thank you. Uh, as our first time taking the floor, I would like to thank the government of uh, Tunisia for hosting this uh, huge event. I'm from Mozambique. My name is Joachim Zindoga. My question is, uh, before we talk about smart cities, I think in my country specifically, we should talk about something else that will enable uh, the city to be smart. I'm talking about school to be, first school to be smart, so that we can have human beings that are capable of making the cities to be smart. So what are the, the ideas from the panels to make uh, developing countries uh, to have their cities to be smart? Because we, uh, we are still striving on other issues about, for surviving. And now we are talking about smart cities and how can we migrate from the current uh, standard of, of life that we're having in our countries to become uh, or to have at least a smart city in developing countries. Thank you. Thank you. So now we will open the interaction of the panelists and maybe we will begin by Mr. Uh, Chao Bing Wai, since two questions were uh, addressed directly to, <coughs> to him. So, Mr. Wai. Uh, for your questions, our government set up a, a special department. The department has great pull uh, token alteration. Uh, uh, it uh, can it uh, can alter all the patterns uh, to accept this system of smart city. Uh, and uh, on federal the information interface uh, uh, to the city system. Smart city system. Thank you. Okay, any other interaction from the panelists? No, okay. So, yeah. I'd like to do one remark on the question on developing countries. Um, it's interesting because in developed countries, which I analyzed mostly, the cities with smart city strategies come from developed countries. Um, they always talk about transformation of already existing systems. So that's also very hard in the sense because you have systems that work on an analog base and serve the people for maybe 120 years in a certain organizational structure. And adopting to this new technologies is very hard to the systems. So in the end, I would say with good investment and talent improvement, it could be even be an advantage in developing countries to not have these obstacles first. You know, you can implement a smart city framework easier because you can start with the infrastructure. And in Germany, for example, we would have to transform a lot of organizations to do that. So it would take a slow, slow process in the end. So I'm not into developing economics, but that would be my remark. It could also be an advantage. Okay, so thank you. So before closing the session, I would like to thank our panelists for their significant contribution and also to thank the audience and our own level delegates for their interaction with our panelists. And now I give the floor back to His Excellency, the Secretary of State. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mohammed. Uh, so uh, I would like also to thank the panelists and uh, to uh, 
uh, think them about their, the content and also about their suggestion, operation suggestion. That's what we need. Uh, we need some, some examples. We need to lead uh, by example the, uh, to, and to lead the changes by these examples. Thank you very much.